Hey, 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 friends, Liz Pivito here. I have a very different type of video than I normally do that I feel like I need to do today. So I'm sure you've heard about the coronavirus. Um, I don't know where to go with that. Um, I personally feel like um, it's a lot bigger than what they are letting uh, letting on to believe. And I feel compelled today to just kind of give you some of my thoughts on it. And also um, to show you how I am prepping for the what if. So um, let me start by saying that um, I do not want this video to incite fear in anyone. Um, I'm not fearful about it. I'm not scared about it. However... Um, if you know me, you know I've been a registered nurse for 24 years. And also, if you know me, you know that I'm highly intuitive and highly empathetic, which means that I tend to be super sensitive to things going on out there in the real world. And um, I have learned in my life that when I'm feeling off about something or I'm, my radar or my spidey senses, whatever you want to call them, when those are, when the hairs on my neck are standing up on the back, I know that I need to start listening to that. Um, so I have been yielding to it and I have been obeying whatever is coming into my mind. And let, let me tell you, first of all, as a nurse, why this coronavirus um, concerns me from a um, perspective of how it spreads, okay? So it spreads through... Um, mucus or moisture droplets so you can get it if someone coughs on you you share a drink with someone anything is contaminated um, through the eyes nose mouth or the main routes of transmission is what they're saying to us right now okay so that's that's nothing to be alarmed about because that's pretty much how most bacteria and viruses are spread right but the thing that bothers me about the coronavirus is what they're telling us is that it has somewhere between a 10 to 14 day incubation period. And what does that mean? That means that a person can be completely asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms at all from the time that they are exposed to the virus and the time that they actually have their first symptoms can be up to two weeks. And yet, during that two-week period, they are still they still have the ability to transmit the virus to other people. So, <clears throat> just to give you a little bit of perspective, the like strep throat and the flu has an incubation period of one to five days. Okay, so having a fourteen-day incubation period is a really long time, and it's very concerning to me. So let's just say that it does spread to the United States where I am, or it spreads to the country or place where you are. If by chance your city was put on quarantine, the CDC and World Health Organization would put a quarantine on a city for two to three cycles, cycles. So I'm sure you've heard that there is a large providence in China that's on quarantine right now. That means that they're going to be in quarantine for a minimum of 28 days. 28 days. That's a long time to be in quarantine. And what does quarantine mean? Quarantine means you pretty much have to stay in your home. Okay. So again, I don't want to incite fear here, but I want to encourage all of my friends to just be smart about this. And prepare okay there I, I'm, I've always been one of those people who was prepared even in high school I was that girl who had you know um I had snacks and gum and mints and you know medications and all that Shh, and medication in my locker and still to this day like I if anybody needs something they know I'm gonna probably have it in my purse so I am the type of person who tends to over prepare anyway so I am preparing for this just in case okay so let me let me tell you some of the things that I'm doing um, that might help you you might want to write some of this down or just come back to this video <coughs> the joys of doing a live video from home hold on just one second Casey get over here that's enough I'm sure it's Amazon 
Amazon Prime. Okay, so um, they better not knock again and start that over again. Stop it. So professional. Casey, I mean it. Okay, so I'm going to go through everything that I'm doing to prepare. You can pick and choose whatever you want to do. It doesn't. Um, <laughs> somebody says, I heard making videos helps, not the rivers. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so anyway, um, again, we're not doing this out of fear. We're just doing this to be prepared. Most of these things you can return if you don't use them, so it's not a big deal. And most of these items are not going to be very expensive. Okay, so the first one is, which I don't have on hand, I have just ordered it, and um, they actually sell them at Home Depot, so you can, could go to Home Depot, but I, as you can tell by the knock on my door, <laughs> I like to do most of my shopping online. So the first one is called an N95 mask. Um, it is important that you get a minimum grade of an N95 mask because the regular masks, the cheapy little masks um, that you can buy like at Walmart or Dollar Tree or whatever, they're not going to actually... Um, protect you as well as an N95 mask. Now, I'm, I'm giving you the idea to get a mask in case you must venture out once, once something happens. It's preferable that you just stay home, okay? Um, thank you, you like my hutch. Okay, then universal precautions, guys. Wash your hands, start this now. Be hyper vigilant about washing your hands, especially when you go anywhere and touch anything. There it is. So if you venture outside your home and you touch anything, a doorknob, a grocery cart, people, a chair, whatever, um, it, it, it's a possibility, especially if you go into a bathroom somewhere, a possibility for it to be contaminated. So hand washing is best. Second best would be your hand sanitizers or a baby wipe, okay? So use um, universal precautions. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face after you've washed your hands. Don't eat until you've washed your hands. All of that kind of good stuff. So remember the basics. The next thing is you want to think about food and water preparations, okay? So do let me ask you this question. Do you have enough food in your home right now that would last you a minimum of 30 days for your entire family? The answer to that question is most of the time no. The average American has somewhere I've, I read recently around 48 hours worth of food for their family, okay? So you wanna make sure you have enough food for your family. And when I talk about that, you can count, you know, for the first week or so, you can count fresh foods because assuming that we're gonna have electricity, um, you can eat most of your fresh foods first, but then you need to have a contingency plan for after your fresh foods and the things in your fridge and things in your freezer are gone, what are you going to eat and what are you going to drink? So think about things that um, have a longer shelf life, think about things that are contained in a package like, um, dried fruit, nuts, um, you know, protein drink, you know, it doesn't matter. I like the plant-based protein, do whatever you want, but this is a really good option. Just very quick. You can have, you know, make that, um, your meal for the day if you need to. Okay. Um, you know, rice, beans, canned meats, canned fruits, canned vegetables. I'm not a huge fan of food that's in aluminum, but in aluminum cans, but in a situation like this, um, I think that you can make an exception if you're, uh, or you can you can go buy a vacuum, a vacuum sealer and um, do it that way. Um, if you have a baby and you are not breastfeeding, make sure you have enough formula that will last you for at least 30 days on hand. I do not want to hear about any babies going hungry, guys. That would break my heart. Um, powdered milk, perhaps. We don't drink a whole lot of milk at our house, so I don't think milk's going to be a problem. Um, and then as far as water goes, remember sometimes during um, quarantines, they will shut down the water supply off and on. Um, so you want to make sure you have a way to filter water, rainwater, or collected water, or a well water. If you have a friend or a neighbor who has well water, we do have a well. We don't use it to drink, but if, if needed, we will use it to drink. So right now what we use is just a, a filter like this, but um, I have ordered a professional water filter that filters out bacteria, um, parasites, all of that. Um, that I will use in addition to this. So water filter, some kind of water filtration. They even make straw filters. So just go on Amazon, actually linked to the one that I'm purchasing. 
um, up, up in the comment or up in the description if you want to look at check that out. Um, it, it, camping, any, pretty much any camping supplies that you would have, they're really going to come in handy right now, okay? So now let's talk about cooking your food. So what if you have no electricity? What, that's the question. So will you be able to cook your food with no electricity? That's what I want to present to you. So um, I got this out as a fun, funny, haha, lighten the mood a little bit. Um, I know a lot of you will lose your minds. You'll lose your minds if you don't have your coffee. So you might want to invest in a French press but that you can, you know, make your coffee in an emergency situation. I don't drink coffee, but I know how some of you are. Okay, so if you have no electricity and you have an electric stove, how are you gonna cook your food? That's the question. So, um, or if your gas gets turned off. If we, I have a gas stove, but what if my gas gets turned off? Then I have to have a contingency plan. So I, we do have a wood burning, wood burning, it's backwards, so I'm all confused. We have a wood burning fireplace, so I can cook my food there. We also have a, a barbecue grill in the backyard. I also have a fire pit. I can cook my food on all three of those mechanisms. If you have a camp, grill, a little camp stove, you could use one of those. Um, the thing you're gonna need, though, is you're gonna need pots and pans that can be put onto an open flame. So that would be your cast iron. I have an entire set of cast iron cookware, so I'm good. You might consider investing in at least one cast iron skillet just to have on hand, just in case you need, do need to cook some food or boil some water um, on an open flame, okay? So now let's talk about um, some supplements that you might consider having on hand um, and before I talk about supplements, let me just say, if you are on any kind of emergency medication, meaning if you need insulin to live or you are on like um, blood pressure medication or uh, antidiuretic that keeps you fluid, if you have congestive heart failure or whatever, if you are on a me any medication that, re that, you requ that is a life-sustaining med, just like me with my EpiPen, I have to keep this on hand all the time because of my allergies, um, you want to, number one, make sure that your medications are in date. So like, I don't use this every day, but I need to keep it on hand. So I have made sure that my dates are good for the next two to three months on that. And if you are on a medication that you take every day, let's say a blood pressure medication that you take every single day, I would highly recommend that you call your doctor and ask if they would consider writing you a 60 day supply rather than a 30 day supply. Now this might make your insurance go a little bit wonky. Um, they may only want to, you know, pay for a 30 day supply, but you can look into apps like the GoodRx app that will help you save money. Um, I, I just, not on my watch, I don't want anybody to run out of life sustaining medications during a event like this. So again, better safe than sorry, right? Okay, so emergency meds, we talked about that. Let's talk about some supplements that you might consider taking starting now just to help support your immune system. I am not in any way, shape, or form telling you that any of these supplements treat coronavirus, okay? It's not what I'm saying. Do not misinterpret my words. I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I take to help support a healthy body and healthy immune system, okay? So um, the t my, the t my two favorite immune system supporting um, supplements are the first one is grapefruit seed extract and I linked to it up above this little bottle this tiny bottle if you use this every day for a family of four it would la probably last you six months okay so look it up I'm not even going to talk about what it is what it does do some research look look it up into I got something all over my hand oh it's from the cast iron skillet okay um the next one is my next favorite is collodial silver you can get it in pretty much any um route <laughs> this one's a dropper but my new very new favorite i've been using this all winter long this is a nasal spray and let's see if i can get it close enough to where you can read it where it's not fuzzy it has olive leaf silver and elderberry in it okay unless you've been sleeping under a rock you know somebody who is shouting from the rooftops how wonderful elderberry is from your immune system but who has time to make homemade elderberry syrup? Not this girl. So I've been using this nasal spray, just one spray in each nostril in the morning and one spray in each nostril in the evening. Th thus far this winter, I have not even had a little cold. I have had some allergies, but 
anyway, it's, I think it's really, really helpful. So I, I linked to this one too above, okay? Again, not treating the virus, just supporting your body to where it can fight stuff off, okay? Some other things you might want to have on hand. Um, I am not a big fan of multivitamins, but um, in a situation like this, like if we were eating rice and beans for multiple days in a row, I know that I'm not going to be getting all of the nutrients that I need from rice and beans. So we will be um, purchasing a whole food based multivitamin for our family. Okay. Something I do take every day is minerals. I currently am taking this. Mineral, it's a mineral powder, but let me tell you, this tastes so bad. I actually bought capsules today so that I can put, look, I, I'm not joking. I bought some veggie capsules today so I could put it in a veggie capsule and not have to drink it because I'm not kidding you. This stuff is awesome. I feel great taking it. However, it tastes like licking an ashtray. That's the closest thing I can think. It's gross. Okay, so... If you're sensitive to taste and not able to drink stuff when it tastes like an ashtray, this is a, a suitable su uh, substitute, fulvic acid minerals. Minerals are more important, guys. Minerals are more important than multivitamins. So if you don't want to take a whole lot of supplements, take this one. Okay, multi uh, fulvic acid, fulvic acid minerals. Okay, some other things that are really good to support your immune system are vitamin A. You can find it anywhere. Zinc, find it anywhere. Vitamin D3, you can find it anywhere. And then these last two, gut health, super important, especially if your di diet's a little off. So this is the one I take. It's super enzymes, digestive enzymes, helps you digest your food. Also has hydrochloric acid in it, which is super fantastic. See that, bentane, HCL? Super fantastic for your gut, okay? Another supplement that I feel everybody needs to have on hand all the time, not even in situations like this, is charcoal. Activated charcoal comes in capsules, and it's charcoal. So it helps to filter and detox things. So like in our house, if we ate too much or, you know, just don't, don't our, our stomachs just don't feel great for some reason, that's our first thing that we take, and almost nine times out of ten, after taking this, our tummies are just fine. So those are great supplements you can take. Let's see if there's any that I missed. I think that's it on supplements. So now let's talk. So we've talked about food, water, um, how you're gonna cook your food. We've talked about supplements. We've talked about the mask. Now let's talk about some miscellaneous things that you might want to have on hand. Um, Matches, lighters, in case you need to, um, uh, you know, in case you need to have, um, light a, light a, make a fire, you know, for warmth or for food or whatever. Candles, in case there's no electricity. How about getting some books in case there's no electricity and you don't have your cell phone to entertain you? You might actually have to learn how to read again. Yep. Soaps and detergents. So do you have enough laundry detergent to wash your clothes for the next month? Do ya? Okay, um, oh, but a basic first aid kit. So do you have everything that you need to clean a wound, to dress a wound, and to treat a wound? So do you have enough band-aids? Do you have, you know, either um, hydrogen peroxide or some kind of cleaner? That you want to use to clean a wound soap and water is just fine actually um, and then do you have something to treat that wound like your neosporin or whatever kind of balm you you prefer to use on it and do you have the dressings that you need do you have enough band-aids do you have ace wraps do you have gauze just in case things that you might need that you will not want to venture out for um if if you need to stay in your house. No, I'm just going to say it, guys. I'm just going to say it. You can totally MacGyver a Band-Aid using paper towels and tape. You can make it work. But if you need Band-Aids, it might be good to have some on hand. And then lastly, the last thing I am doing to prep is um, making sure that I have enough dog food. Because if, if I... 
I want I, I don't want my to feed my dog our precious stock of food so I'm gonna make sure that I have enough dog food on hand so is there anything that I forgot that you would like to add? If so, add it in the comments below. Again, I do not want to get anyone into fear with this video. I just wanted to express to you my concerns and um, encourage you to have enough food on hand just in case we will know. We will know within the next two weeks if this is coming to the US because like I talked about at the beginning of the video, the incubation period thing, we will know. Um, but be ready be prepared don't be wait till the last minute and then freak out um about it the last thing i want to say is to um if you know me you know that i'm a christian and so yes we i feel like we need to be diligent we need to be prepared but do not allow yourself to get into fear there's a scripture in the bible that says some trust in chariots and some in horses but i will trust in the name of the lord so i truly believe that god will provide a covering and protection over us but it does say in the book of revelations that babies will go hungry in the end days so i don't know if this is the end days i don't know if this is one of the plagues that they talked about in the end days but i want to be prepared i don't want my kids to be some of the kids that go hungry during this season okay so i love you guys i hope this was helpful please share it with anyone that you feel would be beneficial to and i hope absolutely nothing comes of this i truly do in my, in my heart of hearts i don't want this to happen but if it does i want to be prepared i want you to be prepared because i love you all right guys bye bye